Hey guys, here we are, and I'm uh, going to bring a new soap to you, and it's been a while since I've used this B10 from Zenith Boar Brush. I've had it soak in for just a couple minutes, and so I'm going to put him back in the water. Let's see how long we can get him to soak for. I'm going to use this car of Christopher Bradley. I believe this is a three and a quarter handle, Gladius handle. And I've hand polished parts of the razor, like the top cap there. This is the B open comb base plate here. And I've discovered that it does handle the Nasset of age pretty well. The Nasset is going to be used today, and it's a mini milestone right before a big milestone. This is shave number 360. So that's a big deal. Um, uh, in five days, a big deal. The um, soap we're going to use, I don't really know how to pronounce it. It came in a set of soaps that I bought, and it's used, and I haven't used it yet. Of course, I know that it being a sterling soap, I know it's going to be an exceptional performer, just the way I like my soaps to be. Now, it's got a uh, polo player, and that's kind of a nod to the fact that it is a duplication of Apollo's Supreme Oud scent. And the notes that they listed are top notes of cinnamon and pepper, and then middle notes of uh, the Oud agar wood type scent, and maybe guayac wood. I don't really know how to pronounce that one. You can look at the description if you're interested in the details there. And then I think vetiver... Uh, and maybe another woody type note is the bass note. Now, how do you pronounce the name here? Meghalaya? Meghalaya? Meghalia? I'm not exactly sure. It. I did a little bit of research, just a little bit, and it said that it was, um, it could be a, uh, a region in India where, and they do make and uh, sell the agar wood um, or grow agar trees or, you know, the, the whole agar oud uh, fragrance is there in some capacity. And so that, I'm guessing that's the connection with this name. Uh, if anybody knows for sure, I know, you know, what's really cool is I've got some viewers from around the world. I've got South American viewers. I've got Russian viewers. I've got um, uh, German viewers. Um, I have uh, 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 some people over in uh, Malaysia. Uh, Akim, I've got him in uh, Singapore, an occasional viewer. And I've got some folks in Chicago in the U.S., some Canadian guys. Um, oh, and then I think Peter is in uh, China, I think. Um, and, uh, and so maybe, maybe some of you guys, uh, might know a little bit more about Meghalaya. All right. Um, so we're going to start off by, uh, the usual, like, 20-second loading, because that's all Sterling really needs. But first, let's do our other things, uh, while we let the brush soak for a few more minutes. I'm going to disassemble the razor, get the blade. Long night of traveling last night, and so I was too tired to shave. And so this is on the growth of over one and a half days. I shaved two nights ago and um, got myself back in the rhythm and then immediately had to shift off of the rhythm, but that's just how life goes, right? You just kind of roll with it. All right. And I think we are good. Yep, I told you a little bit about the soap, so let me get my face wet, and we can start loading up. All right, so we've got the brush having soaked now for five or seven minutes, and that should be plenty. And this brush is not one that I'm focusing on getting a lot of soaking time in. As I shake much of the water out because it's already a wonderful soft brush. It's not like my Sterling 
ore brush or my uh, Omega 20102 brush um, or my Zenith B23 that are ones that I really want to somehow help those tips to advance and, and the splay to open up, whatever it takes, you know, to help those guys out. Uh, this is my lather bowl, 3D printed by uh, uh, the designer for me, and it's very cool that he did that for me, Roger Quintero. You can uh, access the files online to print them yourself. I noticed there was a guy somewhere that was printing something like these bowls for about $25 each. Um, maybe he was on Badger and Blade forums, I'm not exactly sure, but um, that's, that's a good deal. That's a relatively good deal, I think. All right, so let's do a 20 second load. We, I'll start at 56. So 06 would be 10 and 16 will be 20 seconds. So, some of these notes are right up my alley. Oud, the woody notes, the um, cinnamon, not quite so much. Uh, I do like sometimes some uh, a little bit of pepper in my soaps. Now, as you can see by the the dried up residue around the thing that, that the person who owned it previously did not clean off the threads like I do. But I don't like to have problems with the lid fitting on and binding. And so I just went and cleaned it just now. And then I never have any problems like that. Um, I hope the cinnamon is not a super strong part of the scent. And I'm glad it's, it's, it seems to be something that's an accent. So let us build the lather up. Now my Zenith B23 brush is one that you've seen me use a lot recently. As I was trying to get him to catch him up with the other bore brushes that I have in my bore cycle. His bristles are very pointed and have a, a lot of backbone. Two teaspoons, I'm just going to go ahead and put in there. But this brush, the bristles are coming out of the knot almost with a built-in angle to them on the sides. And so it's almost like a natural splay to it. And I really enjoy that. smelling that it's almost like a leather scent with that oud three teaspoons Depending on how long ago this soap was used, that can really tell you, uh, that can really affect how long you need to load. If it's been used the previous day, sometimes that can affect your load time by maybe 10 seconds. If it hasn't been used for two years, then you may want to increase your load time by as much as 30 seconds sometimes. The three teaspoons is a good bit of water, but as you can see, we've got a nice, firm, creamy lather that's holding on to itself very well. He will definitely take, I believe, one more teaspoon of water. And we're just going to go with that. I'm kind of expecting it this hour for one of my kids to pop in and want something. Oh, man. What a great scent. Oh, that's good. Oh. I really like that scent. 
I would have never, no, no, if I would have seen the description, I might have chosen this one, because it definitely has some pieces that I like. I have gotten a few different soaps from the South Florida Wet Shavers, special, you know, private runs that they do, so they must have a bunch of guys at that, in that area that kind of like the scents the way I like them. You know, very kind of manly and that sort of thing. We've got five teaspoons of water in here. I have plenty of lather to do the job. It looks great. This is a short handle, it's a cheap plastic handle. I will likely move this knot to a, a larger handle later on down the line. But the, uh, the saddle here, this narrow point, does offer adequate gripping. I think we're ready to go. Let's take a look at it. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's slick. As I rinse my fingertips off, I can feel that. It's wonderful. All right. Uh, razor's ready to go. So let me get my face wet one more time. Okay. Totally wouldn't mind if this was the only brush I ever had. Nice feel on the face, but it's young enough to where it's still got some softness uh, coming to it. 100, 200 uses down when I get more of the tips to split. Man, it is going to be a different, I wouldn't wager, better brush. But it's already good at this point. We're working it into our face. We don't want to stop too soon. Man, what a great scent. You can smell a little bit of that vetiver and the oud. Just enough, just enough of the pepper and cinnamon to add some cool interest, but it doesn't take over the scent at all. I'm very happy about that. Now, as you work the lather, sometimes you'll notice it can start to dry a little bit. And that's kind of normal if you work it for a while because my face is probably absorbing some of that water, but as you're working it, some of the water is going to be escaping into the air. Looks good. This especially looks good for, uh, sometimes it looks a little different on your face when you have a lot of stubble. First pass might be quite tuggy because I've waited. Cold water today. That's what's coming out of the tap here in the late November. Nice, creamy. It's creamy feel. It is tuggy, but it's not painfully so. If you do have one that's a little tuggy, one thing to try is lift the handle a little farther away from your face so that it makes the top cap touch your skin a little bit more than usual of riding the cap and sometimes it can really make a big difference in comfort and all that stuff. Alright, well, I'll tell you what, the tugginess, I definitely feel a little bit of tenderness on my face. It's going to be gone very soon, but 
this is a great time to bring in a nice cold water rinse. It's my usual habit, but I just wanted to say that that's one of the reasons I do it, because I don't usually need to feel refreshed between passes, but on the occasions where I do have a little bit of a tugginess going on, it's a welcome part of the shave. All right. Get the hair out of the goatee. And... I've got the aftershave for this. I did actually receive the scent. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Sometimes different notes will come across to you in the aftershave because shaving soap is one of the worst ways to transmit a fragrance. That's what I hear from perfumers. When you have something that's in more pure liquid form, like a alcohol-based aftershave, it doesn't get, doesn't cloud the fragrance nearly as much. It's with things like the notes of the soap base, that sort of thing. That's why he, Sterling is not able to do a bunch of scents in the awesome mutton tallow base that he has. Because the base has a certain uh, funk to it. That only only certain um, scents will work with it, so that's why he's only he's got Glastonbury and Port-au-Prince, Varin, all of those are compatible. And now this is a very comfortable, enjoyable shave at this point. Since it was such a long time between shaves, I am going to do a, a four pass and kind of do a nice, easy, with the grain pass this time. good that feels good all right third pass pressing the brush down into the lather to fill up that core of it you don't need a lot of lather at this point you really only just need to brush it on layer it out and then move along. I just like to work the brush a little bit more because I just like the feel. Cross grain now. some family out there about to read a bedtime story it seems and I can lay down a little bit of there we go and rinse all right now it's time for that fourth pass some of the guys who see how many shaves I've done on a blade will claim that I just do one pass or maybe two passes or say well that's how he does it what they don't know is that because I want to get good shaves from a blade that's not quite as sharp I usually actually end up having to do more 
than the average number of passes on many occasions. All right, we're gonna do that cross grain again. It's very comfortable. And then this last time, I'm going to shift directions right here and hope that my trouble spot can get a nice close shave after all that work. All right, Grandma definitely loves reading to the kids. Definitely a good bit of coldness to the water tonight. And I just wanted to mention that that can cause unforeseen issues. It can be very refreshing. It can uh, reduce irritation and swelling. It really does a good job of taking care of, taking care of tenderness. Um, if you've maybe stirred up some brush burn or some razor burn, uh, or if you've nicked yourself, it can really be quite refreshing. But if it's got extra cold water, um, or just actually cold water instead of lukewarm, you can get a little bit of a desensitization uh, feel, which isn't a problem, but uh, just something to remember. Um, if you're reviewing a brush or soap or something and your face has actually become desensitized because of the coolness of the water, then that could make your review slightly skewed because you're not feeling as much as you thought you are. You were. There we go. Four passes of nice shaving. Face feels great. Um, no, uh, no redness, reasonable closeness, I'm happy with that. And so here is the Meghalaya um, aftershave. And it's, I'm sure, going to give me a burst of menthol. Uh, not menthol, but alcohol. Occasionally, sterling aftershaves are a little too strong for my freshly shaven face and best practices are to maybe mitigate it a little bit with some witch hazel or like a toner um, aloe solution like Thayer's you know uh, or I can also wait an hour or two to maybe let my face recover and it strengthens and then I don't get any irritation from the sterling aftershave, but uh, for right now, I don't seem to be having any problem at all. Oh, now that's interesting. A little slightly more woody. I can smell the cinnamon and the pepper a little bit more. That, those were uh, not as perceptible in the soap form. So it's really quite a different scent. They're definitely different highlights to the profile in the liquid form rather than the soap. Yeah, nice. So we'll see. Um, sometimes things smell nice the first 10 seconds and then you get used to it and, and then almost you get annoyed by it. Uh, and so in an hour you can't wait for it to fade or something like that. I don't think this is going to be one of those scents, but that has happened on occasion with scents that I started out to really like. And in that case, often that becomes a soap that I enjoy shaving with like Port Au Prince from Sterling but it's not a scent that I enjoy having around me during the day. And so I don't have the Port-au-Prince splash, but I really love the Port-au-Prince soap. Texas on Fire, I believe the same way. A little too strong as, a, as a, an aftershave product, but perfect and wonderful and mature and full-bodied as a shaving soap. Looks like about uh, two passes of lather left over, so that's just perfect. It looks like that five teaspoons of water for the 20 seconds of loading was pretty perfect in terms of the ratio. The, uh, the tartness of a strong cinnamon is not coming across and I'm really happy about that. Even in the aftershave form, it's a more subdued part of the scent. Maybe a sweeter cinnamon or just a more muted and I'm Really happy. I'm glad that has backed off some. Yeah, I think I like it.
so far. Pretty cool. So you see this Zenith brush, the way they build this B10, it, it's almost like it has an, an intentional angling of the bristles around the side uh, from the get-go. And so it starts off with a good bit of splay to it. Wonderful, easy display during the shave, comfortable, plenty of room for the lather to circulate in there. Uh, I just, I really like it. Some of the tips are splitting. Uh, I really like this brush. Um, the B23, however, doesn't have this shape down here. It's all vertical. I, it's even hard for me to squeeze because there's probably a glue bump or something in there. Um, but it's all kind of vertical straight out of the uh, handle. And so that's, I think, where a lot of that backbone is coming from. But time will tell how each one acts. But looking forward to seeing it. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a terrific soap find. Um, I didn't find it. I lucked into it. I bought a, a mystery box of soaps from a trusted, reliable person on a wet shaving community, and I was rewarded greatly with several soaps that I dearly enjoy and may never have found otherwise. All right. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed that soap. The time will tell if my nose continues to like this scent uh, half an hour later. Uh, it is a little intense, even at a lower strength. Um, the soap was not a very strong scent, maybe four out of ten, um, and, and I think it's a fine place. I still got a nice environment of it around me, got to experience it. The aftershave is stronger, and that's often the case. Um, and we'll see. And I didn't put on a lot. Uh, so we will, I didn't have a lot in my hands when I splashed it on, so this is definitely on the low end of what I might experience normally while using this aftershave. But, uh, right now, very happy with the whole thing. Really glad I got an opportunity to try this scent. Um, haha, you can hear the family go upstairs. These kids are lighter than me by like a quarter and a half, and and a third and just so much smaller, but they're so much noisier when they're stomping around, right? Um, uh, you guys, I, I hope you guys uh, stay safe with your family. Yeah, we've got, uh, as I'm recording this, tomorrow is Thanksgiving here in America. Um, and, uh, and I wish you the very best, whether you're in America or not, um, that uh, you just enjoy your family and friends this holiday season, this winter uh, season. And uh, for those of us in America, we can hopefully be thankful for the blessings that we have, the, uh, uh, the unity that was achieved when the settlers, the early settlers and the Indians joined together for a, a meal and we were taken care of and, and our lives were saved by those Native Americans who were in the northern, uh, northern northeastern USA and uh, came and helped those settlers to survive and uh, they came over to hopefully find some religious freedom. And so I hope that we're all able to secure a place with the uh, freedoms of the things that we hold most important. All right, you guys, you take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.